<clears throat> the broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. I'm Nick Wheatley Schaller, and I'll be giving you this week's open webinar. Um, I work for NetText. I'm our technology manager, so I give a lot of demos to teachers and often show off the product. Um, so I'm just going to go through this webinar. I have everyone muted for now. Uh, if you'd like to ask a question, there's a box for typing text questions on your control panel. Um, you can type a question in there, and then I'll get, it, get to be able to answer it um, when I have a chance. If you'd like to me to unmute your microphone and to ask an audio question, uh, you can just simply type a text question there, letting me know that you'd like to do that, and, we, and I'll unmute your microphone, and then we can talk and have a little dialogue. I'm just keeping everyone muted now, just because so there's not as much in interference. Um, so as I mentioned, um, I'm actually going to start off on our regular site. So this is what our content management site currently looks like. Um, so this is what teachers use in order to manage their courses, in order to upload new items, uh, put those items into unit and units, and then put those units into courses. Um, uh, so what we've done, we've worked on the past few months, is redesign the user interface for this site a bit. Uh, the general way the site works uh, is still the same. You still have items, units, and courses. You can create new items, new units, or a new course. Um, you can take an item that you've created or that another teacher has created, put that into a unit, and then do the same uh, putting a unit that you've created or that another, another teacher created into a course. Um, I'll show off a couple new features as well. Uh, but we're gonna st I'm just going to start off just by jumping into uh, uh, the, my courses page, actually. So uh, as on our normal site, um, you, can, uh, you can view your courses here. Uh, you can view my courses, my favorite courses, or all the courses on NetText. Um, and I'll go back again to our main site. So the way the site currently works is that you can, uh, you can click on an item and then view some information about that item, uh, view the actual item if you'd like, um, and then also manipulate this item. Edit it if you created it yourself. Uh, delete it if you created yourself, uh, view it, uh, download the actual PDF or MP4 file that the item is based on, add it to your favorites list, or add this item into a unit. And what we've done is instead of, um, instead of having to click through to get to this item page, what we've done is allow you to view, view all of that just from this search items page. So when I click on the unit on the item here, it shows me the details. If I just click on the icon, then it will show me this actual unit, show me the actual item. And then if I scroll over to this action bar over here, it will give me all the different actions I can perform on the item. I can view its details, which I just did. I can add the item to my favorites list. I can also download the item, edit it, delete it, view it. Um, I can view the units this item is used in. So this is something you were able to do before, but it was a little more uh, roundabout. You have to actually do that from the search units page. But I can click on unit usage here and see that this uh, item is used in one unit. But on the new site, it's going to be easier. You can simply scroll over any item, click view units, and then you'll see the, uh, the units this item is used in. And now the nice thing about... Uh, about this is that I can click on this unit and see its details, but if I want to learn a bit more about this unit, I can simply click this little open a new window button. This is something that's key for, uh, for exploring units or courses that you might like um, to use the content from. So when I open this in a new window, it opens this actual unit in a new window. So I still have this, uh, this item page that I was just looking at, but now I can also learn a bit about, about this unit. So say I, I like this item and I want to use it in the course. I can see uh, what units other teachers have put this item in. So this is an example. And then I can see all the other items that happen to be in this unit. So it allows teachers to find material they like and then find related material to include in their course. And of course, now if I want to see this actual item, I can just click open a new window. 
So we've gone from this item uh, to a different item by looking at the unit th that the item is in and then looking at a different item that's, that's in that unit. So let's say we like this uh, item and want to put it in the same unit that we're going to end up putting this one in. What we're just going to do is go ahead and click Add to a Unit. This will give us options for what units to add this item to. I'll click the check mark, and then click Done. Then after that, I can see all the different uh, units that this item has just been added to. Uh, when I'm on this units page, I can also uh, manipulate this unit, favoriting it, edit it, editing it, copying it if it's a unit that another teacher created that I'd like to remix in my own way. And then, of course, adding new items to the to it, um, actually reordering the items. And, uh, and then I can add this, I add this unit to a course. And then the same way that I was looking at the units that this item was in, I can also view the courses that this unit is in. So I'll view course usage here, and I can see that there's three different courses that, uh, that use this unit. If I click on open a new tab here, I can see the entire course. So now you can really see how these three different pages work. The courses page, where you can view the course, the units in that course, and then the items in each unit. And then the units page, where you can view the unit and the items in the unit. And, if, and you can also view the courses that unit is used in. And then for an item, you can just view the, uh, the units that, is that this is actually used in. Again, if you have any questions, um, just go ahead and type the question in the in the question box on your control panel. You see that we've had another person come in since I since I started, but uh, that still stands. So you see that we can look at our items, our units, and our courses. Um, I can actually manipulate the units in this course um, straight from this page. So I can click add an item and then choose my item. And add that item into a unit. And now when I look at this unit, this is the item that I just added in. So I'm able to do that to, to, to add an item to a unit from the units page, from the course page actually. I can do the same thing from the units page just by going to that action bar and clicking Add Items. So that's, uh, that's most of the changes that we've done so far. Um, just to use it for an example, um, let's say if we wanted to start with a course, um, look at all courses. So this is not just the courses that I've created, uh, but the t courses that other teachers have created. You'll have to um, apologize for um, this being test data that we're looking at on our site. Um, we'll be moving this over to the regular server once we are uh, ready to release it live. Um, so here I can, I can click on a course another teacher created, view the units in that course, and view the items in each of those units. So let's say I see this unit that I like, and I'd like to use some of the items from it. I can click open a new window, and then it'll open just this unit. Let's say I want to copy this unit. That's just going to be in the action bar here. So I can copy the unit, give it a new title, and then it'll tell me the unit's been copied successfully. So now I have this nice copy of that unit. If I'd like to, I can go ahead and add new items into it since it's my unit and I can edit it. Um, one thing that we've enabled that we did not have before is that um, when you are editing a unit, say I'm editing a unit and I'm selecting the items that I'd like to put in that unit, um, before you had to scroll through this long list, uh, but what we've implemented is a search function. So I can simply search for courses I want, I'm just going to search for graphing.
then it'll go ahead and just show me uh, the items I'd like. Simply click on the item and add it to my add it to my unit. So that's how we got from course, looking at another teacher's course, then looking at another one of their units, then copying that unit over and uh, and adding some new items to the unit. So one of the new things that we've added to the dashboard um, are is a uh, is stats. So if you click on the graph button here, it'll show you stats for uh, for the courses that you've created. So you can see here the top courses that have been viewed um, on the content management site. Uh, you can see my this is the study of fruits course has been viewed the most times. Um, my latest course one is further down. Um, and then you can see the uh, how, how much your courses have been downloaded. So these are all the downloads that have gone to an iPad, to an Android device, and or to our upcoming Chrome app, which I'll be showing off in a minute. Um, you can also show uh, what courses have been removed, um, what keywords uh, have been searched for. And then you can see a comparison of the downloads um, on both the iPad version and the Android version of our app. See that with the little graphs here. So this just gives teachers a little bit more information on how their uh, how their courses are being used, which of their courses have been downloaded a lot. Um, so you can get a little bit more there. Tools. This is just for administrators, so this won't re really come up for regular users. So that's about. It I have to show for the content management site just to re reiterate things. Um, for items, we can view the details, view the actual items, or we can uh, form action on those items. Adding it to a unit, selecting the unit, viewing the units that it's uh, been used in, then actually viewing the unit itself, if we'd like to go ahead and make an action on that unit, such as adding an item to it. And then of course, I can go to the course usage and look at and check out the other courses that use this unit. So that's it for the update on the content management site. I'm going to move over to the Chrome app now. Um, so this Chrome app is a, is a big deal for us. Um, currently, the way we allow students to view courses if they don't have an iPad or Android tablet is to view it through the web. And I'll show you what that looks like currently. Um, so you can see we open up a course. We can see all the information about the course. We can view the units in the course. Uh, we can expand the units and see the different items in the course. There's a, we can open a PDF here. This will open within the browser. Um, but I need an internet connection to view these items. I can download them for, for future use. Here I'm downloading the actual PDF, so I can use this offline later. But you can't interact with the user interface. It's not as organized. It's just not um, as good a solution as actually having all of this content stored offline. So what we've done is we've built a Chrome app that works pretty much the same as our Android and iPad apps. And here um, you're able to view courses offline. So these are two courses that I've already downloaded. So I'm going to click on this Algebra Demo course. You see we quickly see the units in the course. Uh, we can see a count of the items in each unit. If we click on that, it'll bring us up and uh, show us all the actual items in this unit. So again, these are all stored to your browser in off offline storage, local storage. So a student can view this anytime, even without an internet connection. Um, so when I click on a PDF, 
see it opens there. Um, one thing that we've added is uh, a quick switch feature that works well on the desktop. So by viewing this item, I can click other items, and then it will show me other items in this unit. So I can quickly switch from this item to this content link or switch to this slideshow. And click back, and then uh, I could do the same thing, switching between units in the course. So I can switch from this unit to the other unit, and switch back. This is all offline. The only time they would need an internet connection is if they wanted to use it like a web link like this. But normally, students would not need an internet connection to view these courses. The way that these courses are downloaded um, is similar to our iPad and Android app. We have a course collections page where students can, can, download, can find courses to download. They can also search for a course. So I'll go ahead and just search algebra to find a course. So uh, we have a question. Uh, you mentioned the book is offline. Can they save a link to a book on their desktop? Um, there's no way to save the, the, a link on their desktop. Um, the way that would work is that, uh, or the way that it really works is that the student would have to open Chrome first. Um, and then right in their Chrome toolbar, there'll be this little NetText logo. So then anytime I'm using my Chrome browser, I can just click on the NetText logo and click here. And it'll, it'll open... Um, It'll open in a new tab, opening the NetText My Courses page. Um, we can't put the links on the desktop um, just because, uh, because this is a Chrome app within Chrome. So moving on, just completed this search for algebra. So you can see we have a pretty decent selection of courses here. If I click on Algebra 1, it will show me this Algebra 1 course. I can click Add this course. And you can see the progress going here. Um, so this, this will be downloading to offline storage. While that's happening, uh, it's very easy to switch back and forth. You can switch to another tab. Um, you can go ahead and actually open another tab with NetText in it. And while this course is downloading here, Oh, it actually finished downloading. So I'm going to say view the course details, yes. And now I can view all the items in this unit. Switch between other items. I'll go back to the unit. So this is a uh, this is a app that's going to be in the Chrome Web Store. So for those unfamiliar with how that works, this is where Google distributes all of their apps for Chrome. Um, so just for a quick example, we have the Kindle Cloud Reader here. This runs offline, uh, helps you use your book, helps you read books offline. And what you can do here is just click Add to Chrome. And then you'll have to be signed in. Um, but it'll ask you to add Cloud Reader. Click Add. And that becomes an app uh, in Chrome. And you open a new tab. You actually have selection for all your apps to open. So this will be distributed through the Chrome Web Store. I'll probably be in the education section. Uh, another thing to note, so when uh, 
when a teacher has updated the course and the student uh, needs the new material, they'll just go to the, the course details page here and then click sync. And that'll download any new material and delete any old material from the course. So that's about all I have for the Chrome map. Um, again, pretty simple in, uh, in function, pretty similar in functionality to our existing iPad and Android apps. If you'd like to check those out, um, we have links on nettext.com. Um, we're in the App Store on iPad. So open link in iTunes, and then you can also download our app from Google Play. Excuse me. Here you have that text. Um, this is optimized for the Nexus 7, the Nexus 10, and the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1. Uh, go ahead and send us an email at info at nettext.com if you'd like to test a, a beta version on an unsupported device. Um, we do have some upcoming um, upgrades to the Android app. Um, we're working on bringing the testing module, the the testing module, the, um, the, which is interactive assessments, the calendar events, and also um, note-taking. So those are features that were on iPad and that we are bringing to Android uh, for this August. Just got another question. Uh, this one, is this faster than downloading material on the iPad? Which version, which method do you most recommend to students for syncing new materials and updating their courses? Um, it should be about the same as downloading material on the iPad. Um, we're also we're actually releasing an iPad update um, soon in the next few weeks that will make background downloading a bit more effective. One of the problems with the iPad is that if you uh, if if you move away from an app and you're trying to download something, it can get very slow because it uh, it'll put that as a background process, um, and sometimes it'll it'll cancel the download. But we've uh, we've made that work a bit better on the iPad, so um, so it should be downloading a bit quicker. One advantage of this is that uh, for downloading large courses, it's very easy to uh, transfer away. Excuse me. It's very easy to transfer away to a different course, um, to, to to a different tab while the course is downloading. So things could could be a, can be a bit more stable on the Chrome app, but again, we're trying to make that as best as possible on all of our uh, all of our devices. So I'm happy to answer any more questions. Um, I'll just go ahead and give the normal spiel. All right. Thank you, Cynthia. Thanks for stopping by and uh, hope we can be in touch in the future. Um, so just to run through some more uh, generic information about NetText. Um, here on our website, you can see information. You can get links to our app on iPad and on Android. Um, we have an overview video for all of NetText, for our iPad app, and then for our Android app. Uh, one very useful piece is our introductory course. Um, this will give you tutorials on how to use our iPad app, how to use our website, how to um, do all of that. Show off some features. Um, you can learn a bit more about our consulting services where we help schools build courses uh, to use NetText with. Uh, if you want to go to our media page, you can check out a bunch of videos, some promotional videos, some just videos about NetText, um, some tutorials showing off different features. And then if you want to check out some of our actual courses, you can head to our course collections page. Here you can view our NetText courses with introduction, media, and Android tutorials. And then we also have 
courses made out of open educational resources um, that we've created for middle and high school, um, as well as some collections of literature and uh, collections of OER resources um, based on provider. If you'd like to contact us, we've got some information here. You can email us at info at nettext.com. I'll give us a phone call at the number above. And then we have our emails up here. If you'd like to send me an email directly, you could just go to Nick Wheatley Schaller, Technology Manager. Uh, you'll find my email there. So if there's no more questions, I'm going to go ahead and close this session in just a minute. I'd like to thank everyone for, for watching. And again, we're show, just showing off uh, the NetText app. Uh, Chrome app, as well as our upcoming, currently in development content management site. And these will be um, introduced in, in July, by the end of the month, just working on testing, making everything as effective as possible. So thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you soon.